Our text today is based on the gospel lesson which you heard just a few moments ago, uh, the story of the ten lepers coming to Jesus, coming in their need. And just think of these words especially crying out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. In the cartoon strip Ziggy, Ziggy and his dog Fuzz, they are lost in ski country. Well, Ziggy pulls out a book and he says to Fuzz, oh, we won't get lost hiking in the woods this time because I brought the cross-country skier trail guide book. And he's looking around and he says, you know, matter of fact, Fuzz, this area looks none too familiar. I better consult the guide. And he says there are three, it says here that there are three methods of finding our way home. And so he goes on, he says, number first, there's the coin flip method. He says, I think, I think we'll skip that. Number two, oh, that's the Oh, that's the eeny, meeny, miny, mo method. Uh, he says, that doesn't sound too good either. He goes, here we go. Number three, the auditory method. He says, that sounds, that sounds impressive, doesn't it? Let's see what it says to do. It says, A, get comfortable. B, take a deep breath and C, Yell, help, as loud as you can. You know, it sounds like a pretty reasonable choice to me. I mean, some people are equipped with the skills to find their way out of the wilderness on their own, but for the rest of us, yelling, help, should probably be our first option. Look how your service, how the service started today, too, in the responsive reading. Help! Bills, home repair, inflation, world peace, too few hours in the day. How many situations do we run into that we want to say, help? Our Bible passage for today is about ten men with leprosy who had no way of saving themselves. Their disease affected them physically. They had inflammation and nerve damage. They were affected socially in that they were cut off from having contact with others. And it also affected them spiritually because they were cut off from worship in the temple. So the first the last, and really the only option that these men had was to cry out for help. And when they did, Jesus heard them. Jesus was traveling along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And he encounters this group of men with leprosy and lepers I mean, they were used to having people go past them all the time, not pay any attention because they were outcasts. They were the unclean. They were quarantined away from their community. They were cut off from their families. They were even prohibited from worshiping in the temple. And everywhere that a leper went, he had to stay at least six feet away from a healthy person at all times. And that might sound familiar to us after these past couple of years. And he was required to shout a warning to anyone who passed by. He had to yell out, unclean, unclean. I mean, could you imagine seeing people flinch and run away from you as you shout, unclean, unclean? So that's why it's not surprising, or rather, it is surprising, 
Because instead of yelling, unclean, unclean, these leprous men are shouting at Jesus. But instead of unclean, they're shouting, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. What do you think that they were expecting from Jesus? Let me ask you, what do you expect when you cry out to Jesus? Do you expect healing? Do you expect comfort? Do you expect an answer? I think these leprous men wanted, they wanted Jesus to see them. Maybe to pray over them, maybe to offer them some words of hope. I mean, they were so cut off from normal life. They were so isolated. They were so helpless. If Jesus Maybe he could even just offer them some kind words and the presence of God just for a moment. Maybe these outcast and dying men would have been satisfied. But the fact is that our Lord Jesus had so much more to offer them, just as he has so much more to offer us. You know, this story of the ten lepers, it's a great image of our faith journey. It's a great image of what it means to be a Christian. Because the journey of faith often comes with three essential steps. We come to Jesus with a need, not knowing what to expect. We receive new life and respond in gratitude. And then we go out with a new mission to share the message of Jesus and the promise of new life to others. You see, the first step in their faith, faith journey is that the lepers, they came to Jesus with a need. And how often do we maybe come to Jesus with our needs? But most often, our faith journey oftentimes starts out with what I'm going to call a tow truck faith. Because, why do we come to Jesus? Because we're stuck. We're broken down. Our spiritual engine has failed us. And really, all we're looking for is a quick toe back to our old life. And so we cry out to Jesus with our needs. But God's first blessing on us is the blessing of seeing us and our deepest needs. Throughout the Bible, we see that Jesus is always attentive to, always aware of, always searching, searching out those who are suffering and those who are left out. You know, I'm convinced that even just one leper had stood by the side of the road and whispered to Jesus that he would have responded. And then the second step in the faith journey is to return to Jesus with thanksgiving. And that's where this story becomes a cautionary tale for us. So these men cry out loudly for pity. And Jesus, he gives them a challenge instead. He says, go, show yourselves to the priests. You see, in those days, the priests were the one, well, they were the only ones who could verify if someone had been healed of leprosy. And having inspected the patient, they could announce that the patient had been healed and they could be restored to the community once again. And so those leprous men are on their way to the temple when they are miraculously cleansed of their leprosy. Nine of the lepers presumably return to their normal lives. I mean, they've been healed. They got what they wanted. The curse of uncleanness has been removed. And they just can't wait to get back to living and resume their old lives. Only one leper, a Samaritan man, returns to thank Jesus. I mean, look again at what the text says. It says, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. It says, and he was a Samaritan. 
the one man who returned to thank Jesus wasn't even a Jew. He was a Samaritan. And this Samaritan, when he saw that he was healed, says he came back praising God in a loud voice, and he, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And, that's, and I think that's another really good lesson in this verse for us, that if you are going to cry for help loud, let your praise to God be even louder. Loud, humble, enthusiastic, heartfelt, uninhibited gratitude. That is one of the defining marks of a Christian. That kind of gratitude, it naturally turns to joy, which is another one of the defining marks of a Christian. And many Christians reach the first part of the faith journey, and they bring their needs to Jesus, but they never go any further. They don't live in perpetual thanksgiving and praise. They don't return to Jesus and throw themselves at his feet and pour out their praise to God. And the fact is, we miss out on that greater blessing that God can do in our lives if we take our blessings for granted. When we return to our old lives without experiencing and expressing our overwhelming gratitude to Jesus for the salvation and the hope that he has given us. You see, our praise and thanksgiving are not dependent on our circumstances. They are dependent on the relationship that we have with God. They are dependent on how much we know the power and the sovereignty and the provision and the grace of the one true almighty everlasting God. And his love never fails. And his purposes are eternal. And that leads us to that third step in our faith journey. And that's to go forth from Jesus with a new mission. You see, we come to Jesus with a need. We return to Jesus with praise and thanksgiving. And then we go forth from Jesus with a new mission. The mission to spread his name and his truth. To share the promise of new life with others. I mean, let's look at the leper's story again. While the ten lepers were on their way to the priests, they're cleansed. Nine of them went back to their old lives. One returned to Jesus with loud cries of praise and thanksgiving. Nine of them got exactly what they wanted, healing. One, the one who remembered to give thanks and praise, received so much more. Because Jesus looks at him and says, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. And the word that's used here for made you well can also be translated as saved you. Your faith has saved you. You have healing. You have restoration. And now you also have salvation. Rise and go. He says, because other people need to hear your story. You see, God didn't just save us so that we could go back to our old lives. God saved us so that you and I, so that we could pass on that blessing of hope and joy and love and new life in Jesus, that we could pass it on to everyone we meet. So rise and go. Your faith has saved you. Rise and go in praise and thanksgiving to God. Rise and go because there is a world out there that needs to know the hope that is in you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it keep our hearts and minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen.